So I'll address the homicide by the cops And how you never slide on them But you love to slide on the ops Say what's cracking YouTube It's your boy 16 to life And I'm back like I'm on a pro violation Yard down now, for those of y'all that's new to my page, in 1994, I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life, and I served 24 years straight in the California prison system. Um, normally, I tell prison stories, right? But today, this is going to be a little something different, right? Um, when I do tell my prison stories, or when I tell any story for that matter, or any time I tell a story that I believe may have the potential to create racial division, I try to keep my personal opinion out of it. But this particular time, I'm not going to do that, right? And for those people who may not happen to get it, I understand. And let me be more clear. When I say those people, I'm specifically referring to white people. If you don't happen to get this story or my point of view, I definitely understand because you haven't had to live a large portion of your life where you have been unfairly scrutinized, you have been watched, followed, unwarranted, and unfortunately sometimes even stopped by the cops harassed, and even arrested when it's unwarranted. So this particular video, my opinion and feelings have all been sparked by a case we have going on right now in Braxton, Mississippi. Uh, Braxton, Mississippi is about 35 minutes southeast of Jackson, Mississippi. And so what happened is you had a neighbor call the police. She said she believed that two men were staying next door with a white girl. And so uh, once this police officer got the call, he texts five of his other buddies and basically told them, hey, yeah, you know, you got, are you guys ready to go on a mission? And these were all police officers or, or deputies and officers of the law. And they also at times referred to themselves as the goon squad due to the fact that they was willing to use violence in certain situations. So let me play you guys the, uh, the news clip. Turning now to a very troubling story out of Mississippi involving six law enforcement officers convicted in a brutal racist assault. They called themselves the Goon Squad, and two of them were sentenced yesterday. The attack began when someone called to complain about two black men staying with a white woman. Errol Barnett has been following this case, and we want to warn you that some of the details are very disturbing. <clears throat> We wanted justice and we have some justice. Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker say they are satisfied after a federal judge sentenced former sheriff deputies Hunter Elwood to 20 years and Jeffrey Middleton to 17 years for crimes the judge called egregious and despicable. As far as the, the torture session, it, it went down, you know, mainly in here. A so-called goon squad of six officers pleaded guilty to crimes, including entering this home last year without a search warrant. There, they shocked Jenkins and Parker with stun guns, sexually assaulted them, and poured alcohol and milk over them while shouting racial slurs. The six white police officers involved in this assault sought to dehumanize their victims. Elwood admitted to shooting Jenkins after putting a gun in his mouth during a mock execution. Look at me, I'm looking at him, and you sat there for a minute, and you pulled the trigger. In the courtroom Tuesday, Elwood apologized directly to the two men. Parker then forgave the ex-officer. An investigation by the Associated Press revealed that since 2019, some of the deputies had been involved in at least four violent assaults on black men, which resulted in two deaths and another suffering lasting injuries. What do you say to people of color in Rankin County who look at this case and wonder if they're safe? Well, I think that the people of color in Rankin County are safer uh, than they were this time last year. Now, later today and throughout the week, the other four officers involved in this racist torture incident will be sentenced. They face anywhere from five to 30 years in prison. But lawyers representing the victims say that's not enough. They've called for the ouster of Rankin County Sheriff Brian Bailey, and they filed a $400 million lawsuit against him for overseeing this team. His legal team says that lawsuit should be dismissed. Tony. Errol, thank you very much. So now keep in mind, this case initially happened in January 2023. Um, these deputies, they stormed the house without a warrant, handcuffed and arrested these black men in their living room, and then began to torture these dudes uh, for about 90 minutes. They tortured these dudes with sex toys. Uh, they violated them, calling them the N-word often and repeatedly. They poured liquor, milk, 
Serp, chocolate all over their heads, disrespecting them in the presence of their own house, all for the fact of they got a call from a neighbor saying that they believed that two black men were staying with a white woman. Now, keep in mind, like I said, this is 2023, but they barged up in there like they was part of the Ku Klux Klan, like this was rural Mississippi back in the 1940s or the 1950s, somewhere around there, you know what I mean? Just the, you know, and so of course, you know, I know that there's people who don't believe that the police do these type of things. Like I said, this is 2023 when this happened and so after they tortured these dudes they forced these dudes to shower together i'm assuming to wash off the the syrup and the milk and all the liquor that they poured on them and all that stuff after the police forced these two dudes to shower together and their names is eddie parker and michael jenkins they were brought back to their living room at some point in time i believe the officer hunter elwood placed his gun in the mouth of michael jenkins i guess he says as a mock execution but uh he ended up shooting him in the mouth so it went through his mouth the bullet went through his mouth through his i believe jaw area and came out of, of his neck somewhere then instead of rendering michael jenkins aid they go outside and they concoct a plan to frame these dudes and they plant drugs on them and a gun i guess that they had had previously from some other incident that they had been involved in and for many many months these two dudes were charged with um with charges having these these illegal drugs and these guns and so they ended up filing a federal lawsuit i believe and it all unraveled when the police were pretty much unable to explain why the bullet came from the inside of his mouth and so eventually um they ended up pleading guilty and now they end up they ended up getting sentenced. Well, actually, two of the dudes were sentenced yesterday, and then I believe two more will be sentenced today, and then two more will be sentenced tomorrow. So um, keep in mind, these guys did all these things under the guise of being police officers, right? So they definitely harassed these dudes, tortured these individuals under the color of authority. And so yesterday, two of the officers who participated in this incident were sentenced. The guy who shot the dude in the face, Michael Jenkins, the officer by the name of Hunter Elwert, he was sentenced to 241 months federal time. So he'll have to probably do about 85% of that. Uh, Jeffrey Middleton, he was sentenced to 17 and a half years federal time. In my opinion, both of those dudes still got off extremely light. These officers barged into these guys' house under the color of authority. They handcuffed these guys. They tortured these dudes sexually. They made them shower together naked. They called these dudes repeatedly racial slurs. This went on for about 90 minutes. Now imagine the terror you would be in if somebody was to barge into your house doing all these things to you. Then on top of that, these are police officers. So as you're sitting there in your mind, you're already wondering what type of recourse do you have? Because we already know in many instances, more often than not, the police word will be believed over a uh, person that's being arrested. And we got to keep it 100 again, especially a black person. Now, at this particular um, town that they was in, Braxton, Mississippi, I believe the population is 179 people. So it's an extremely small town. Also, I believe the population in that small town is 95 or 96% white. Braxton, Mississippi is located in a county known as Rankin County. And that county is about 74% white, according to the research that I was able to do and find out on that. And once again, like I said, even though they were sentenced to 20 years and 17 and a half years, respectively, I still believe they got off extremely light. Let's keep it in mind, right, that this is a federal case, right? So you have had dudes who were sentenced to life sentences just for having five ounces of crack cocaine you know that's about maybe 140 grams of crack cocaine so you mean to tell me if it's a federal law that if a person gets caught with five ounces of crack cocaine it's deserving a life sentence in the federal prison system and of course when you get life in the feds it's exactly that it's life so if it's okay to give a person a life sentence for having five ounces of crack that he hasn't even sold yet but then you have an individual and not an individual, we're talking about a police officer. This man can go in your house. He can write a false report on you. He can kidnap you, basically. 
he can take your freedom? You mean to tell me that a person that does all that, he is not deserving of a life sentence? Because So let's think about it now. Had these two dudes been unable to prove that these officers actually did this and had they been sent to jail, you know, you have affected their livelihood in so many ways that's impossible to describe. First and foremost, you've kidnapped this dude and you've took his freedom. You've got him sitting in prison for something that he didn't do. So now while he's sitting in prison, he loses the ability to take care of his home, to pay his mortgage, to pay his rent, to be with his family, to raise his children. It's just so many things that you cannot even describe and put into the equation that will occur to a person that's sent to prison illegally. And unjustly. At some time yesterday, during the sentencing phase, um, Officer Hunter Elwood, who shot Michael Jenkins, was allowed to speak. And he said that, I wish I could go back in time. And if I could go back in time, I would go back seven years to when I first started noticing these behaviors. So what he is alluding to is they have been doing this for at least seven years. Now, they may have not shot anybody and they may have not violated a person's rights to this extent but then maybe they have right since 2019 it's been reported that at least some of these officers was involved in four violent incidents two of them leading to death and so these officers have been running around violating people's rights under the color of authority for a long long time who knows how many people were sent to jail illegally and lied upon by these rogue cops. So uh, let me be the first to tell you, right, that I have no problem seeing police officers go to jail. Reason being is because they are held to a higher standard. They are not on the same playing field as a gangster, as a thug, as a convict, a crook, a person who voluntarily... Um, participates in the criminal activity and let me tell you why because if a criminal in the street happens to do something illegal or violent to a person he then does not have the means or in the police's cases the luxuries to write up a report lie on the person who he assaulted or harmed and then be supported by the justice system more times than not and send you off to prison as well you may have a lot of people out there and i definitely don't believe they're minorities who believe that the police are infallible. And just because a person dons a law enforcement uniform does not mean he then suddenly has superpowers in terms of morals, honesty, being incorruptible, and things of that nature. But like I said, um, you don't have white people deal with this type of behavior by these crooked cops on the scale or the level or as often as you will have people of color, minorities specifically. And so I definitely feel that all those officers who participated in this unjustly attack on Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, they definitely deserve life. Even the officers who did not shoot this man, because once they saw this man was shot, they didn't try to help this dude. They went outside to come up with a plan to cover this incident up and to charge these dudes criminally. Right. So, of course, if you do something like that, you're complicit in the whole scheme. So let's keep in mind that those six officers were officers of the law and they have took an oath to uphold the constitution and to uphold the rights of all citizens of the United States of America. Now also in my opinion, this is a segue into another conversation not necessarily related to this topic, but I believe it's worthy about speaking about here. This is why you have many, many, many people of African American ancestry who feel it's not cool for other races to use the N-word. And sometimes I'll hear other races who use the N-word say that I'm not saying it in a derogatory fashion, right? I don't I mean no disrespect. And I understand all that, right? But I grew up in an era where the stench of racism was definitely still more prominent and stronger. And so of course, the further and further away a person gets from the smell of that stench the less he will be bothered by it. And in my opinion, I feel that's what has happened with the younger generation today who have no problem with other races saying the N-word. And so like I said, of course, I definitely have a problem with it. I was born in 1971 and racism was more prevalent and prominent back then. I definitely didn't suffer through things that people suffered through in the 1950s, in the 1940s, and so on and so forth, right? And so for those of you who are not of African ancestry here in America, it's incidents like this 
and many, many others, why you have so many people who oppose of other people who are not of African ancestry uh, using the N-word. You know, like I said, those two individuals, uh, Michael Jenkins and uh, Eddie Parker, they sat there for about 90 minutes being tortured by the police, hearing the police call these dudes names, racial slurs, using the N-word. And so to hear another person just use that word and so even if he's just using it in what he considers a term of endearment uh, for people who have to suffer and go through those type of incidents is definitely not a term of endearment. Now, you know, I'll often see white people say, oh, well, you know, you know, uh, you guys need to get over that. You know, that slavery stuff, you know, that was in 1865. You know, that's slavery was was legally ended in 1865, even though it didn't end there. Right. And so. uh my, you know, my response to that is if your people have not been continuously subjected to racial discrimination, um, racial attacks, racial stereotypes, you definitely you definitely wouldn't understand it. You know, it, it reminds me one time when I was in prison and I was watching this show by this dude by the name of Henry Louis Gates Jr. And he had a genealogy show where he, where he would basically he would extract your DNA, of course, with your permission and research your history and find out um, where you came from. You know, he'd find out things about uh, your family back in the 1800s and all that old type of stuff, right? And so I was watching this white lady. She was on there and she was interested in finding out about her family. And so Henry Louis Gates, you know, he goes and he gets her DNA and then he finds out where she's originally from, you know, what town and all that back down south somewhere. And he digs through the records and researches through these old um, library documents and this and that, right? And so he discovered like maybe in the 1800s some, at some point in time, her great, great, great grandfather was beat up, shot, robbed, and killed by some other white men. So now here you have this white lady who is years and years and years uh, in generations related to this dude. But obviously, of course, she didn't know this dude. But upon hearing how her great, great, great grandfather was beat, robbed, and his life was took, you know what she did? She burst into tears. She burst into tears and she was crying at just hearing how her family, a family member, had lost his life in such a savage uh, manner, right? And so um, at that point in time, I said, well, dang, you know, uh, why wasn't she able to get over it? Like, like a lot of white people suggest black people should do because when your family hasn't been attacked in that certain way, uh, it's just hard to understand. You know, that's why so many blacks was rooting for OJ. We wasn't rooting for OJ per se, right? We was rooting for a brother, a black man, having a fair shot at beating a system which we know is wrong, a system that we know is unfair, and it treats blacks differently. Because um, as far as I know, because as far as I know, O.J. was never a celebrated and loved figure by African-Americans in this country after he retired. You know, it wasn't like he was um, like a person somewhat maybe like, who, let's say, Magic Johnson was after he retired, helped out the community, gave jobs and uh, did a whole bunch of stuff like that. You know, nobody necessarily really, in my opinion, cared for O.J. Simpson like that. You know, the big thing of the matter is we were just rooting for a brother to get a fair shot. I believe there were many, many, many people of African ancestry in America who believed O.J. Simpson was guilty. But there was a bigger issue, I believe, on our hearts and minds. And that was because we know that when it comes to a justice system here in America, if you are of African ancestry, the chances are pretty high that you're not going to get a fair trial in the court system. And so that's what I believe the people who were cheering for OJ was more satisfied about because if we keep it real right after OJ was found guilty he ran right back to the white people so we wasn't necessarily caught up in supporting OJ per se you know and so like I said if you happen to be white and you don't get it I truly understand and I suggest to people out there who are of African ancestry in America when white people don't get it don't get upset you know, don't get bothered, don't get frustrated because they definitely have not experienced what we have experienced. So how can you expect them to understand something like this to this magnitude? But anyway, 
You already know who it is. It's your boy 16 to life. Resume normal program. And I'm hella paranoid. Cause I don't wanna be the next Eric Garner or George Floyd.